What's up, animators? So today I'm going to show you how to make this uh, cool UFO motion tween right here. All right, provide your own sound effects or check out my other video in the top right corner on how to add audio, how to add little sound bites in Adobe Animate. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to go to File New, start a new project here. And I'll wait patiently. Here we go, here we go. Uh, that's cool right there. These presets don't matter as long as it's frame rate 30 frames uh, per second. Action Scale 3.0, create. Here we go. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so you can see here I have a UFO. And we have another frame. It's just a bunch of uh, oval tool shapes right here. So there's a gray oval there, a blue oval, and a bunch of yellow circles. So I'm going to go over here to the shape tool. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button on that rectangle tool there. And select oval tool right there. And I'm going to go with the color for my UFO body here, the main uh, the main part of the UFO. I'm going to go over here to fill. I'm going to go with gray. I'm going to go with this lighter gray color here. And then for stroke, no stroke. So no outline there. You can add an outline however you want to do it. But I'm going to go with no outline there. And I'm just going to make a big oval here. Hold down the shift key, drag across. Sorry, I'm not holding down shift. I'm just dragging across. But hold on shift, I get a perfect circle. But I want something that looks more like a flying saucer. Something like this. Cool. All right, now I'm going to go here to the selection tool. I'm going to click on it one time. All right, as you can see here, it's just a regular shape object. If I bring something else on top of it, it's going to click off of it. It can clip off of it. So, for instance, if I bring in another shape over here, it'll become part of it. And I don't want that to happen, see? So I'm going to convert this into a shape drawing object. So selection tool, click on it. And then over here, click on object, object tab in the properties panel. If object tab is not available, it's because your object is not selected, you got to click on it. There we go. Now it's there. If you have a stroke on it, double click it so you can get the stroke there as well. And then I'm going to click on this right here and it'll convert it over to a drawing object there. So there we go. Cool. So now I've got that blue boundary box on it. There we go. So I'm going to go over here to Oval Tool. And I want this one to also have that same effect there with the blue boundary box so it doesn't clip off. So I'm going to click on this right here. There we go. And it's a little hard to tell if it's on or not because the color in the background is very similar to the color here. But if it's a lighter gray color than, than the outside of, outside of it, then it's active. I'm going to go over here to fill. And then I'm going to go over here for a blue color to make the cockpit for the uh, UFO. And I'll just make it above it right here somewhere. That looks cool. Selection tool and click on it and then I'll bring it into place. There you go. So you can have a little higher, a little lower, however you want it. Bring it in there. You can use the arrows on your keyboard to adjust it as well. That looks cool. Nice. I like that. All right. <clears throat> so now I'm going to make the, uh, the yellow lights here for my UFO. I'm going to go Entitled. And we're here to Oval Tool again. And I'll make my lights yellow. You can go with whatever color you want. Maybe your uh, UFO has green lights. Maybe it has yellow lights in the front, red in the rear. I don't know. Your UFO. Fill right here. Still no stroke. And I'm going to go with the yellow color. This one looks cool. I'm going to make perfect circles. So I'm going to hold on the shift key and drag select the cross. There we go. So that circle, it's a little hard to see with the background. So I'm going to change the color here of the stage. So I'm going to go over here to dock. There we go. And I can change the color here of my stage. Look in there. And color I want to make my background. It's going to be my sky. I might have clouds later. It's in the sky. Maybe a green sky. There's going to be an earthquake. Sorry, a tornado coming by later. That looks cool. Good contrast there. Selection tool. And I'm going to click here on my circle. All right, I want to make a bunch of copies or clones and put them, put them around here so it looks like the lights on the UFO there. And to do that, uh, you could do something like Control C and then Control V to paste. But you know it's going to go over there and you have to try to put it back in place. So another thing you can do is click on it with the selection tool. Hold down the alternate key, ALT, is right next to spacebar. There's probably um, an alternate key on either side of your spacebar. Hold it down. Um, first, select your object. Hold down the alternate key, ALT. Then hold down the left mouse button on your object here that you want to copy. You want to clone there. There you go. Pull it out. And then pull it where you want to put it, or approximately where you want to put it at. Later, you're going to adjust it. And then let go of the mouse first, and then the alternate key. Because if you let go of the alternate key first, it's just going to move it over. See? Ctrl-Z undo. So let go of the mouse first and then the alternate key. So that's a little bit low. So I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to click on it. And then I can use the arrows on my keyboard to bring it up. But I'm going to do that last. What I want to do first is um, just position them here around there. And then I'll go back and adjust it. Maybe I'll make my UFO here a little wider. So I'm going to click on it. 
free transform tool. Let's make it wider than that light right there. Let me bring that down some. Oh, cool. There we go. Let me go back to selection tool. What you want to do is try to line these uh, lights up with the uh, with the outline here with the curvature of your UFO there. I'll click on this one, alternate key. I'll put one on the other end over here. So notice here I'm putting the um, one in the middle, two on the side, then I'll start filling in the blinks here. Click this one, hold down the alternate key, hold down the left mouse button on that one, drag it out, put one around there, there we go. Click, Alt, hold down, click. Let go of mouse, let go of Alt, there we go. And I'll bring in some more. And I'm just doing the same thing here, holding down the alternate key, dragging the mouse over, let go on the mouse first and then Alt last. So let me make my copies here. And there we go, something like that. And I'm just gonna click them here and try to adjust them in place. If it's clipping off, if for instance you got like um, something like this here where it's um, it's making a hole, let me show you guys. If it's doing that, if it's been doing that, just click on your object and then click on select your object, go over your object tab and click on this one right here so it doesn't clip off. That's this button right there. All right, that looks coolish right there. Calvin Coolidge. Was that one of my favorite presidents? I don't remember. I like Taft. I like both Roosevelt's. Calvin Coolidge. I think I think it was cool. Sorry, the League of uh, League of Nations. Help start the League of Nations. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna stick with that. You know, I want those behind the grain. I can right click it. Over here to uh, range and then send to back. There it is behind it. Click on that one. Right click. Send to back. Arrange. Send to back. And I can only do this if I have that um, drawing object mode activated right there. If I go to break apart where you get the little mesh pattern, mesh pattern, I won't be able to do that. There you go. And if you notice, it kind of follow the, the curve here of my of my UFO. You can click on them and then move them around with the arrows on your keyboard. Try to adjust them to place a little better. That's cool. Man, let's see what it looks like. I'll put another one back there. Oh, nope. I'm just going to leave it as is there. That's cool. All right, now I'm going to convert this to a symbol. I'm going to drag select the whole thing right there. So selection tool, just drag it across. There we go, got it, got it all selected there. And I'm going to right click it and select convert to symbol. As you can see there, there's a shortcut. You can also hit F8. There we go, I'm going to name this one a UFO. Uh, make sure it's graphic and then the registration uh, center, okay? Just to create a motion tween, you need a, you're going to need a symbol. If you don't uh, make a symbol, it's going to make a symbol for you. It's going to ask, hey, I want to make this into a symbol. So um, better for you to make your own symbol so you can have, so you have more control over it. All right, so there's my UFO. I'm going to go ahead and call this a UFO layer. So I'm going to go here to layer uh, underscore one, double click in there. And UFO, UFO. And then I'm going to lock that one up so I don't mess it up later. Add a new layer right here, hit the plus sign there. And right here, layer uh, underscore two, I'm gonna double click in there. I'm gonna call that one clouds, I'm gonna make clouds. There go clouds, enter or click. And then to make clouds, it's very easy. Let me zoom out, 80%. I'm gonna already have the oval tool. And we think about clouds, they're round, they're fluffy, right? So oval tool, that's gonna be the oval tool. Go over here to fill and choose a color for your clouds. You want white clouds, gray clouds, whatever color your clouds you want. I'm gonna go with this uh, gray color right over, what color is this one? A bunch of sixes. So I'm go with this one here, a little lighter. See, I'm gonna hold down the hold down the left mouse button and drag across. There's an oval there, and another oval there, another oval there. See, I'm just uh, piling up on top of each other. I'm making clouds there. See, I can make little small ones in there. Give it a little more uh, texture there, little small ones. There we go. And another cloud. I'll make one over here. And then oval tool. There we go. That's a cool looking cloud. Another cloud there. And just drag across. And it's put clouds. And we're just making clouds with the oval tool there. And the little small circles there. And a little more texture. These fluffy clouds, cartoon clouds, something like that. Let me make one right there. I'm uh, never going to see that one. Uh, no, I don't like the shape there. Let me add one in there. 
Uh, there we go. Detail there. Cool. There we go. We added one in there. There we go. One more. Cool. Maybe one over there. There we go. See, there's my clouds. So it looks like clouds. So I just make a bunch of ovals, stack them up on top of each other. Boom, you got yourself a clown. I'll leave that one there. All right. So now I'm going to go over to frame 60. So it'll be a two second animation, animation, uh, 30 frames per second. And you can actually insert a frame in uh, two frames from different uh, layers at the same time. So I'm going to click this one here. I'm going to hold on the shift key and click the one right below it. If I click one out of the distance, it's going to select everything in between. So be careful with that. So for the, it's a multi-select, but also selects everything in between the two selections. Click that one, hold on shift, get the one directly below it. And then I can insert a frame here at the same time. So I'm going to right click it. Now I'm going to go with insert frame. Usually I would go with insert keyframe. That's if I was doing a classic tween or a shape tween. But here with the motion tween, uh, we get to in a way create our own uh, keyframes. I'm going to go with just a regular frame right here. Insert frame. There we go. Copies that over. Uh, later I'm going to actually add a motion tween for the clouds as well so that the clouds move a bit. Right here you can see the clouds, uh, they move just a slight. You know, usually clouds move pretty slow, right? There we go. All right, and now I'm gonna lock the clouds layer. I'm gonna unlock the UFO, and I'm gonna start twinning the UFO. So I'm gonna right click somewhere between frame one and 60 for the UFO layer, and select motion tween. If you don't have motion tween available, it's because it's still locked. If it's locked, let me see me lock it. There we go. You can't motion tween it, so make sure it's unlocked. And then you're gonna right click motion tween. There we go. So, um, the motion tween is there, but there's no animation going on. So there's my UFO. So I'm going to go to the uh, most extreme end there, the other end. So frame 60 over here for the um, UFO layer. I'm going to go over here to the selection tool. And I'm going to move my UFO to its uh, final resting space, place where it'll end off at the end of the animation. So I wanted to stop over here behind this uh, cloud right there. There we go. And I did that in the last frame there, frame 60. And as you can see there, now I have a motion path. Each of the little dots here, little pins, whatever you want to call them, they have a corresponding frame in the uh, timeline panel there. So if I go somewhere here in the middle, like 30, it's going to be right in the middle there. I can manipulate this curve here with the selection tool. I can hover my mouse over the edge of the curve here, over the path, so I can try to curve it. Make sure it's not selected, because if you click on it, you end up selecting it, and then you can't get that curve anymore, the little eyelash, so you can curve it. So click out of there, and then uh, hover your mouse over one of those pins, and you go with the little curve there, and then you can hold down the left mouse button and drag it. So you can do stuff like this. So now you can curve the uh, the motion path there. Once you get the little eyelash icon there. And there you go, I'm just dragging the playhead here. Hold down the left mouse button on this uh, rectangle and then drag it. Cool, see so it's going behind that cloud. Starts up there and then goes behind that cloud. Maybe I'll have it swoop up over here, so I'm gonna go over here. And this time I'm gonna actually move the UFO up. Let me see if I can click it there. Uh, I think I selected it, but I'm not sure. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go here to the free transform tool. That'll let me know a little better if I select it. There we go, because that gives me that boundary box there, that um, that transform box there. So now I'm in the last from here. I'm gonna pull it up from here, and it gives you a much more extreme uh, move because I'm moving the actual UFO itself. So if I go over here where the curve is at, I can pull it out a little further out. I mean, like around there. Click on this frame here where that's happening, and I can pull out the UFO. There we go. This is the little curve that you get here, the little eyelash. Remember, you have to have the selection tool. Get the eyelash. If you do these changes, a little smoother versus the uh, the actual pull that you do there. As you can see here, these frames are closer together, and these are further space apart. So right here, these being further further um, are closer to each other, they're actually move a little slower, a lot smoother. And these being uh, further space apart, will actually move a lot faster. So let's check it out. I'm going to activate the loop tool here. Drag across the play button. Go a little slow and then shoots out. I said I wanted to go even further. I got to make these uh, further apart from each other. So I go to the last frame and I can use either selection tool or free transform tool and just pull it out way out here. And now see there's a bigger gap between them. Let's pull them out further. And so now with the gap being wider, it's going to make it move a lot faster. Notice when I move the UFO, do not click the center of it here. Because then I'm going to get something like that. And I don't want to do that. That won't give me a good natural movement to be a, a quick jerk. Let's see there. Cool, there we go. Go over, to, go over here to the free transform tool. Another thing I can do with the free transform tool, I can rotate it and I can scale it. 
to go to frame one. Let's say I um, want to pretend I'm coming out from the from the background over there, then I come to the foreground. So I can try scaling it down here in this frame. Let me hold on the shift key, scale it down the free transform tool. There we go. Let me put it further out. And then go over to this frame here. I gotta scale it back up. There we go. There we go. Cool. All right. So you can use the free transform to do that. You can also use it to rotate it. So I can go over here and rotate it a bit with the free transform tool. You're going to turn. So let's rotate there. I'm going to go slight turn. All right. If you notice that um, the orientation for the UFO basically stays the same. So another thing you can do is click on any frame inside your uh, UFO uh, timeline here, your UFO layer with the motion tween and you get the frame data over here. So make sure you click on a frame and you get the frame data over here in the properties panel, the frame menu. You can click orient to path. And it'll follow the path. See, now it'll, it'll do like a flip there. There you go, maybe you don't want that, that's okay. You can just turn it off and go back to the frame here and deactivate it. You can have it rotate as well. Let's say it was spinning or something clockwise, see? And you can have it uh, do a spin. It looks pretty neat. Like it's doing a trick. And you can have it uh, twist the other way around too. So do a counterclockwise, have it flip the other way around. And there we go. Uh, let me check that out again. I think I like the oriented path on that one. No, I think I like the clockwise better. So I'm clicking here. I notice every time I click out of it, it gives me a different uh, tab here. So I have to go back, click a frame again. And I'm going to go with uh, clockwise. And you can only choose one of these. You can't combine them. So every time I click something else, it switches over. It turns the other one off. I like clockwise there. There we go. That's pretty cool. All right, over here on this one, I got the um, orient to path. So I like the, the look on this one, just based on my curve. I like the look of that better. Just whatever you guys like, go for that. The tools are there for you to, to, to play with. Cool, there's that. Uh, the clouds are moving. So I'm gonna move the clouds, make it look a little more entertaining. So I'm gonna lock my UFO layer, cause I'm done with that. Now I'm gonna unlock the clouds layer. And um, it just selected all of them for me right now. I'm gonna right click inside the clouds layer, make sure it's unlocked. And I'm going to choose Create Motion Tween. And it's going to convert them all into a symbol for me. Uh, what I could do, I could uh, convert them all into individual symbols. But it's okay. They're all going to move it together. So I'm just going to click right here on Create Motion Tween. Uh, multiple objects are selected. You must convert them to a symbol in order to tween them. You want to convert them and create a tween. Yeah, cool. All right. So now they're one symbol together. So you have one giant blue boundary box. And I'm just going to move them, shift them over to the left a little bit. So in the opposite direction that the UFO is going. Make it look a little neater. So I'm gonna go over here to the last frame, right there. Selection tool or tree transform or free transform tool, it doesn't matter too much. You can just shift it over a bit. Not too much, just a slight movement there. There we go. Control enter. There we go, and I'm done. I got a motion tween there. Got my UFO doing a flip. Going behind the clouds there. I just gotta save that. File save as. All right, UFO with the tube as a new tube. Save. Let me export this uh, video file here. File, export, export video media. I want an MP4. This way, I have a universal file that I can upload to almost any social media platform, if not all. So, format, make sure it's H.264 and default AME. AME if you want an MP4 file and just activate start uh, Adobe Media Encoder render queue immediately. So once this other application pops up, it'll render it for you as a, as a video file. And it's gonna go in the same place. Sorry, it's gonna go to the desktop right here. And it's gonna be the, it's gonna have the same name as my FLA file when I want to file save as, which is my uh, Adobe Anime file. So I'm gonna click export, and it'll create my video for me. Uh, it takes a while for that other application to load, and then another few seconds for it to create the video. So wait patiently, it could be anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. It'll feel like an eternity, even if it's just 30 seconds or two minutes. All right, so here's my Adobe Media Encoder, and it's already rendered it for me, letting me know by that check mark. And here's my video, bam. Cool, the truth is out there. I don't know if anybody remembers that TV show from the 90s, the truth is out there. Um, I don't know where that truth is at, 
But it's definitely not on Facebook. If anybody's curious, the truth is not on Facebook. I'm telling you right now, it's not on Facebook. I'll put money on that. But thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day or evening. Take care. Uh, let's love, love each other and ourselves. And uh, you can help the channel by liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, anything else. Have an awesome day. Bye.